So uh, I'm just reviewing Bill Easterly's latest tirade, um, The Tyranny of Experts. Um, it's rubbish, but it's kind of interesting. Um, he, he's expanding his idea that the world is divided into planners and searchers. And his new, the new sort of extra thing in his new book is that the planners are also racist. Um, and he sort of tracks it all back to the, 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 the technocracy was born as a way to avoid um, uh, giving rights to people. Uh, initially in China, interestingly, then the, uh, all the way through to uh, British resistance to anti-colonialism, et cetera, et cetera. The reason why I'm starting with that is because, in his view, planners are just evil people, and the good guys are searchers. Right? Um, never mind the fact that he works for a university, which relies on planners to actually manage its budgets and everything else. He doesn't see a contradiction there. Um, the interesting thing about this work is that it's actually saying what is good planning and what is bad planning, which is a much more interesting question than are you for or against planning, um, because that's just silly. Um, so I might have to rewrite the review after, after this. <laughs> um, so, so some of the things planning is good for, good planning uh, is good for, well, the, all planning is good for allocating money. It's good to have the conversation in terms of building goals and approaches. Um, it's good for accountability. Um, done badly. Planning actually makes you dumb, makes you stupid. It makes you miss windows of opportunity. I could not believe how crap the British environmental movement was on the recent floods. Right? Here you have a major shock, a chance for a massive debate on climate change, and I saw kind of a couple of people with a banner behind a BBC camera, and that was it. Yeah, pathetic attempt to use, uh, a failure rather, to use massive window of opportunity. I'm going to put a blog up on later on this week, and I'll probably get assassinated because of it, but <laughs> it was really unimpressive. Um, and that's because planning done badly weakens your feedback loops. It makes you actually insensitive to changes in the system. And let's cuss Oxfam as well as the environmentalists. So, you know, the first thing we knew of this massive change in the global food system in 2008, when food prices after 30 years of falls suddenly went up through the roof, was when we supposed policy wonks in Oxford were phoned up by journalists and asked for comments. We didn't have feedback loops in place from all our staff who undoubtedly knew what was going, that something weird was happening with the food system, for them to actually mention it to us or for us to listen. So, it, and that's because we're too trapped in the plan. It gives you delusions of control and it leads to lying. Okay, so the classic, yeah, you know, Ros Ivan's done all this great work at IDS about how aid workers live this kind of uh, split life where you go out and you kind of surf events and you improvise and you work with partners and then you come back into the office and pretend it's got something to do with the log frame. Yeah. And that you kind of have this weird cognitive dissonance and that that actually is being a good aid worker. Uh, it's a terrible waste of human endeavor, but it seems to be what we do. Um, so those are the sort of bad sides of planning done badly. What do you need to get in place to make planning good like this? And we've done the, we've, the, the game is fantastic. We played the game at Oxford, uh, at Oxfam, and it was, uh, we didn't do enough reflection, but the game itself was pretty shocking. Um, and I hope that I, ODI, when the summer comes, can all go off to a park and do it. If you haven't done it already, it's really quite uh, striking. So planning for uncertainty, sorting out the feedback loops. I think some really interesting work from Harvard and, o and, and ODI on outsiders shouldn't think they have the answers. They shouldn't think they have the solutions. The role of outsiders is much more to focus on identifying and amplifying and understanding problems and getting people into the room to find the solutions. So you don't need those two pages of policy recommendations that no one reads mm -hmm. in your report. You need to just highlight the problem. We did this inequality report saying um, five, 85 individuals in the world uh, have the same assets as three and a half billion poorest people. It's actually now gone down to 67 because the rich people had such a good year last year, I found out today. But, and, and it had pages of bloody recommendations about how Oxfam would end global inequality. What a waste of time. The, the thing, it was the, the, the sheer shock value of the problem that was the value of the report. So focus on the problem. Rules of thumb, much more important than your big press pa best practice sh hymn sheets. What are the rules of thumb? What are, you, what are the basic questions you ask in this situation? Are you asking, what's the gender? What's the gender aspect of this issue? Are you asking, what's going to happen if? Who are you talking to? You know, the basic rules of thumb that good aid workers use, we should explore those. Actually, let's have better rules of thumb. And let's not worry about the, you know, the pages and pages of manual. Um, failing faster. NGOs are terrible at failing. Uh, it's just that we haven't succeeded yet, in most cases. Um, and that means you waste a vast amount of resources. Decide what failure looks like, as well as what success looks like. And then get all the people you need to in the room 
to identify the failures and stop putting money and time into them. Uh, it's a real, you know, we are much worse than venture capitalists at killing off the bad stuff. And that means we do less of the good stuff. Uh, employ different people. You need people with antennae, conversations, who know people who don't work in NGOs. Um, you know, you need people who are, who are out there and are connected into their environment so they pick up the signals early. And then you need to empower them to bring the signals into the office, not think that that's somehow taboo. Um, so you need to have political conversations, social conversations in the office and react to them. Finally, you need results for grown-ups. So you, you want to measure stuff, but you need to measure stuff that is often more difficult. You need to measure women's empowerment. You need to measure resilience in a way that will convince the funders. And it can be done. You know, funders are actually quite open-minded, normal people. Um, and you just have to have a conversation with them. Comments on the report, quickly. Gaming, yay, love it. Um, I've got mixed feelings on flexible and forward-looking decision-making because I'm massively skeptical about anything which smacks of scenario planning, anything which looks into the future. We need to be um, good at um, present-looking um, decision-making. We need to be much better, much better at plugging ourselves into what's going on around us. If gaming helps, then that's great. But the key thing is the feedback loops you've got now not, not spending a lot of time on modeling. I mean, we can leave modeling to the scientists and the clever people. We just need to get better at seeing what's going on around us, I think. Um, the report's very good on some basic things about um, sort of how change happens, discontinuity, uh, political economy. I won't repeal that. I love the wiggle room thing. The fact that in any situation, even working in aid, there is wiggle room. You are not a captive of your environment. Um, is really important for us the people we're working with, and exploring that wiggle room is the art of, of, of making stuff happen. Uh, it missed out a few things. I think it didn't capture enough of what other bits of ODI are doing, actually, um, and other people in the political economy sphere. So it didn't capture the idea of doing multiple experiments and then seeing which ones work. It didn't do a, enough of this Harvard stuff on identifying the problem and then solutions coming up. Um, it didn't have enough on shocks as windows of opportunity to change ideas. So, I mean, I, it may be in the main report. I didn't read the entire report. Uh, so, um, I wonder that the, the one bit of government which is always the best at working in, with high degrees of uncertainty and unpredictability is, is the military. So I'm just wondering if you ever talk to some of the military thinkers on this stuff because they really are good at this mm. um, on a good day. Uh, and uh, yeah, we don't plug into military <coughs> methods and strategy and thinking enough when we're talking about these systems. Um, uh, and finally, just coming out of this talk, if you do your power analysis, you run the game for four people, not 40. That sounds like a bloody good idea. Have we tried it? If not, why not? You know, I mean, you, you, if four people are playing this game, they're going to get a lot more out of it than if 40 are. I know it's undemocratic and all the rest of it, but you might play a different game. But it's a really interesting idea to do your power analysis and then design the game around it. Um, phase three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Um, and thanks as well for your patience to, s patience to still be around and hope you can still stick a bit around uh, for the next 10, 15, 20 minutes um, to engage in a discussion. Um, but first of all, are there kind of questions, understanding, very brief, just short issues that from any of the presentations you would need um, some further enlightenment? Or are there issues you would like to pick up where a debate among the people here on the uh, table could, could pick up and discuss? Um, yeah, we've got one question over there. <laughs>